You are inside your house at night and you look out the window and see the moon. It glows a dazzling white. The next day you take a casual walk outside in the middle of the day and you look at the asphalt on the road. It has a dull grey colour. The day after that you take a casual walk on the surface of the moon and you look at the ground. It has the same dull grey colour. Wait. When you looked at the moon through the window, it was a bright white. Now when you look at it from the surface, it is grey? What is going on here? The moon itself is not entirely the same colour. The surface of the moon has two distinctive colorations. The dark areas of the moon are referred to as the lunar maria, where the rocks are primarily composed of basalt. The light areas of the moon, which compose 84% of the moon's total surface, are referred to as the lunar highlands, where the rocks are primarily made of anorthosite. But even the light areas are still grey. Here is a photo from the Apollo 16 mission. Apollo 16 was in the lunar highlands, where the rocks are lighter, but you can see that the ground is grey in colour. Here is a photograph of the moon passing in front of the Earth as seen by the Deep Space Climate Observatory. The moon looks darker than Earth. If the moon is grey, why does it look vibrant white at night? Maybe the moon looks bright because at night it is surrounded by the pitch black sky. Our brains can perceive the brightness of objects differently depending on their surroundings. For instance, in the simultaneous contrast illusion, the section of the bar with the darker surroundings looks brighter than the section of the bar with the lighter surroundings, when in fact the whole bar is the same colour. We can see this easily by checking the colour of each pixel using a drawing program. Well, let us take a photograph of the moon and see what colour it actually is. And the moon is... white. Wait, but if we go to this photograph, it is grey. Let us check another one. It is white. And in this one, it is white again. How is this even possible? To understand, we need to know a bit more about how brightness is measured. Light contains energy. A brighter object would be releasing energy at a greater rate than a dim object. So maybe we will measure the amount of energy an object emits for a given interval of time. Energy is commonly measured in joules. If an object emits light at a rate of one joule per second, it is a radiant flux of one joule per second. Radiant flux is the rate at which an object releases energy. A light bulb may have a radiant flux of 10 joules per second, also called 10 watts. The sun has a radiant flux of 380 yotta watts, which is 380 septillion watts, 38 septillion times brighter than a light bulb. As you can tell, the sun is far, far brighter than a light bulb. But how well it illuminates a surface depends not only on how bright the light source is. Like how planets that are further away from the sun get less light and are colder. A useful way of quantifying how much light an object receives on its surface is its irradiance. How irradiated a surface is, is the amount of energy the surface receives over a given area over a given time interval, typically measured in watts per metre squared. Imagine you had a 100% efficient solar panel. If the solar panel had an area of one square metre and the irradiance from the sun was 1000 watts per metre squared, then it would have an output power of 1000 watts. Realistically, a solar panel would be 20% efficient so it would have an output power of 200 watts. When the sun is directly overhead on the surface of the moon, the irradiance would be about 1,350 watts per metre squared. On Earth, some of this light is filtered, so even on a cloudless day, the irradiance would only be about 1,100 watts per metre squared. Now, how bright is it inside, in comparison to how bright it is outside? Well... This is where things get complicated. A light bulb may emit 10 watts of light, but not all the light emitted by the light bulb we can see. There are certain types of light that are invisible to our eyes. 
Your body glows with a radiant flux of 100 watts. This is brighter than a typical light bulb, but the light you emit is not visible light, but infrared. Light is an electromagnetic wave, an oscillation of the electromagnetic field. The frequency of the light represents how quickly it is oscillating. Frequency is typically measured in hertz, which is the number of cycles per second. The perceived color of the light changes when the frequency changes. Blue light has a higher frequency than red light. The light our eyes can see is between 420 terahertz and 720 terahertz. But there are many kinds of light that are invisible to our eyes. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. If we want to be measuring the brightness of an object, we should only be considering light that is visible to our eyes. Not only that, our eyes are more sensitive to certain frequencies like green than others like violet. We need to weigh certain frequencies more than others. This is where the luminous efficiency function comes in. This function represents how sensitive our eye is to certain frequencies. It is most sensitive to green light and it becomes less sensitive to higher and lower frequencies. We use this function to weigh frequencies our eyes are more sensitive to more than frequencies our eyes are less sensitive to. So instead of measuring radiant flux, which is the total light emitted by the body, we instead often use the luminous flux, which is weighted to how much our eyes actually can see. Imagine we had a perfect light source that was emitting light that exactly had a frequency of 540 terahertz and the total power it was emitting was 1 watt. A lumen is defined so that this light source would be emitting 683 lumens. This means lumens are a measure of the total luminous flux emitted by a body, the amount of visible light emitted by a body in all directions. The sun, for instance, has a luminous flux of 38 octillion lumens. An old-fashioned incandescent light would emit much of its light as infrared, which we cannot see. An incandescent light may emit 10 lumens if it consumes 1 watt. A compact fluorescent light may emit 60 lumens per watt. An LED lamp may emit 100 lumens per watt. Instead of measuring the amount of light that hits a surface in watts per meter squared, we can instead measure it as lumens per meter squared, lux for short. This is known as the illuminance of a surface. If there are no clouds and the sun is directly overhead on Earth, the illuminance may be 100,000 lux. And if the sun is directly overhead on the surface of the moon, the illuminance may be 130,000 lux. Let us say you have a thousand lumen light bulb, which emits light evenly in a hemisphere. The ceiling is 2.5 meters above the floor. The ground directly below the light bulb would be illuminated with 25 lux. This is far, far lower than the 100,000 lux I mentioned earlier. While it may not seem like it, the light levels outside can be more than a thousand times brighter than it is inside. Asphalt reflects around 12% of the light that hits it. If a one square meter slab of worn asphalt is being hit by direct sunlight on an ideal sunny day, it would reflect 12,000 lumens. The surface of the moon reflects a similar amount of light. Let us make a one square meter screen that emits just as much light as the asphalt reflects and you put this screen inside your room. Wow, that is bright. This is a bright white. This looks like the bright white of the moon outside. This is exactly the same brightness as the asphalt you looked at during the day. But how come the asphalt was a dull gray when you looked at it outside when it is now brilliantly white inside? It is because your eyes adjust to the light levels. Pupils can change how much light enters your eyes by a factor of 10. The photoreceptor cells will also change their sensitivity depending on how much light they receive. They become less sensitive in bright light and they become more sensitive in dim light. For the case when we took photos of the moon, cameras also change their sensitivity based on the light levels. The reason the moon looks so bright at night is because your eyes become very sensitive to light under the low light conditions. Meanwhile, if you were standing on the surface of the moon, the surface looks dark because your eyes would be less sensitive to light under the bright light from the sun. In addition to that, our brains often perceive objects as being brighter 
if they have dark surroundings, such as with the moon when it's surrounded by the dark sky. Well, that's it for this video, so goodbye!